This election has produced the largest parliament under MMP ever. Overhangs, recounts, a resurgence to party Māori. So much to talk about. So joining us now to break it all down on what it means, political scientist Dr Lara Greaves. Morena. Te nā morena. Uh, so let's start with to party Māori's mm. success. Six seats, yeah. zero two elections ago. Can you yeah. put that in, into context for me? Yeah, in an international world context as well, because I think I've been, I've been teaching Indigenous politics, mm. and depending on how you define some of those Latin American parties, we do have one of the most successful Indigenous parties in the world with Te Pāti Māori. Right. So it's kind of very interesting, I'm sure, like Indigenous groups around the world will be watching Te Pāti Māori and what they've done here, because we had, you know, their kind of first wave as the Māori Party, and mm. I like to think of them as waves. So okay. version one was the Māori Party, it's a yep. bit different to Te Pāti Māori now, which is mm like now their official name. And yeah, like I keep trying to predict things based on, you know, past data, yeah. past history, cases around the world, but too hard with the Party Māori because they're on this like upwards trajectory. The momentum quite, yeah. is, is incredible. Yeah. But it's in the electorate, it's not the party vote. Yep. Why does that happen with Te Pāti Māori? Well, we always kind of talk about are Māori voters strategic? We always have that kind of thought and, and discussion of has MMP kind of bedded in and we kind of understand MMP more. Mm. It seems like yes. The answer <laughs> to those questions are kind of like yes. I know, like, people generally... Voters on average are not, but it does seem as though there's a level of strategy. The other thing I would That's say is that yeah, yeah. you have to give credit to, to Party Māori as a flax roots movement to actually tell people about, hey, this is how we're voting, this is what we're doing, this is where we're going, that kind of thing as well. And the other thing that I'd highlight is from the available data that we can see, is they are quite rangatahi, Ngāti Apopo, like the, pe the people of tomorrow type movement right. is what okay. Rauri Waititi used at one point. Yep. So picking up on that next generation really well. Yep, yep. Yep. OK, let's just uh, quickly look at um, just four votes lead for Takutai Kemp. Mm. Uh, it could be anyone's. Yep. So the recount process will happen Really, relatively quickly or not? Well, potentially. Again, it, we haven't had it confirmed totally that Penny Hannaday is going to go for that and mm. Labour are going to go for that. But quite quickly, it normally takes one to three days to um, do a recount. I would really refer people back to the 2011 Waitakere judgment from Judge Adams, I think it is. It's a great description if anyone wants an assigned reading about the recount <laughs> process. Sure everybody does, and what yeah. happens, you know, it's a great description <laughs> because it's literally like them going through each of the, each of the votes, the scrutiny yeah. is involved, and yeah. seeing what counts as a vote. So does a love heart over someone's name count as a vote. Wow, does it? Um, in that case, I think it did. Oh, but, wow. you know, like, okay. it's, it's like getting down to that kind of level. And in that, well, that's in so that case, yeah. That's because Takatai is saying that one mm. vote will do it for her. So it does have yep. to go down to that level, doesn't it? Yeah, and what's clear as well there is around the whole thing around is someone on the Māori role or general role, that's the other element that happens within Māori electorates. Um, so there's, there's a few variables going on there. Mm. Um, and we'll, I guess we'll soon see what happens there. But if you look back at the Waitakere um, electorate in 2011, out of about 30,000 votes, it was a couple of hundred that could have changed or that they were discussing. Yep. So actually, four votes. Yep. Dicey, dicey very, for them, yeah. Very dicey. Um, let, so we'll see what happens there. Um, <clears throat> in the overall picture, some grumbling. Yeah. Quite a bit of grumbling, actually, over yep. the time taken to count the special votes. Yep. Tell me just briefly, why does it take so long? And because of that grumbling, or is it just procedural that we might get a review of this? Well, why has it taken so long recently? So it's, it's the special vote. So the special votes have to go back to their electorate to get counted in that electorate, right. and then they have to get processed. Now, those are the ones that where they have the two envelopes, you know, the, the enrolment on the side and the actual vote. So that's that extra processing. There's all these things around having to recount all of the votes as well, because, you know, one count's not necessarily accurate. Accounting for missing booklets, where did all the booklets go. So it's, it's a huge process. Now, the reason that it's taken more like three weeks instead mm. of two as it used to is that the number of special votes has grown. Right. So one of the, it's a trade-off in making voting easier has increased the number of special votes because people can now enroll and vote on, on, on voting day or update their address on voting day. So all, all that takes, so yeah. all those, uh, making it easier makes it longer makes it to easier, count. Makes it easier, yeah, makes longer. it more admin. But yeah. as Graham Edgler has said, um, a, a lawyer in the space, is that you then have the thing of you could speed it up but it would cost more money. Right. So it's like trying to figure out what that balance and we can tolerate in society is. Is this likely to have a review or is the whole electoral process going to come under review as, as happens, is that a procedure that happens after an election? Like yeah, this? so after an election the Electoral Commission writes a report on how it did. It looks at, you know, where it performed or didn't and, and looks at survey data on satisfaction. Then they report that to the Justice Select Committee, which is the, you know, politicians on that select committee and they come up with a set of recommendations. Right. That's the normal process. Well, another long week for some politicians. Uh, it's been a long three weeks for the uh, for the electorate as well and we'll see what happens yeah. this week uh, Lara Greaves thank you so thank much you. for your time thanks